This is going to review the last four questions of Unit 3's test review concept review portion. So Story 8 says that Maisie loves making milkshakes and uses three parts ice cream to two parts milk. And she's going to have a bunch of people over and wants to make milkshakes for everybody. And she figures she's going to need about seven and a half cups total of the milkshake beverage to be able to make sure everybody has one. So how much ice cream is she going to need in order to meet this need? So we start off with saying, well, there's three parts ice cream to two parts uh, milk. All right. Well, that means that each recipe that she makes has a total of five parts to of it to it three of which are ice cream to the total of five parts milk. Well, this gives us then our basic proportion of ice cream to the total amount of milkshake. And that we need to make a total of seven and a half cups of milkshake. So to figure this out, we're gonna go ahead and, and we need to know how much ice cream that is. So to find that out, we're gonna do, use our proportional methods of saying seven and a half, times three and when we go seven and a half times three not 36 we get 22 and a half so 22 and a half and then we cross multiply to get five times whatever the quantity of ice cream is the unknown quantity so then to solve for x we need to go ahead and divide five off of both sides so that we can isolate x well, if I have 22 and a half and I divide it by five, I get four and a half. So four and a half cups of ice cream are needed. And then we could also verify this by figuring out what well, was the, that the right amount of milk. So that would be saying that if I need to make seven and a half cups and four and a half of those cups are going to be ice cream, that means that we have three cups that are going to be milk. Okay, so let's find that out. So if two out of the five parts are milk, and I need to make seven and a half, does three work for that? So if we cross multiply five times three, it's gonna give us 15. If I have seven and a half twice, that is also 15. So yes, that means that my proportion of four and a half cups of ice cream was correct. Then for question number nine, it says Hank's dog had surgery and the vet sent him home with some pain medication so that the animal could be comfortable. And the dosage ratio is two and a half milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight. So Hank needs to figure out, well, how much medication is he gonna need if his dog happens to weigh 50 pounds? So we need to set that up as a proportion. So we have two and a half milligrams per 10 pounds body weight, and the dog weighs 50 pounds, how many milligrams is that? So we can cross multiply, cross multiply, so 10x equals, I'm going to be a lazy and use the calculator, 2.5 times 50 equals 125, 125. Well, when I divide 10 off of that, I know dividing by 10 means I just add a decimal to that. So I'm going to do the shortcut. It means we need 12 and a half milligrams to make sure Hank's dog is comfortable. So what about if we have an animal that is 37 pounds? How are we going to find out how big of a dosage they need? We keep with our same proportion. We have two and a half milligrams per 10 body weight. We now have 37 for body weight and an unknown dosage for that. We cross multiply to get the 10 X equaling, if I have 37, two and a half times, I have 92.5. So I have to divide the 10 off of both sides to isolate the X. And again, I know when I divide by a 10, I'm just moving the decimal forward one place, which means nine and one quarter or 25 hundredths milligrams is going to take care of that critter. 
if we have the milligrams, but not necessarily the weight, we need to go ahead and use the same proportions to let us figure out how many pounds is it going to be? 22.5 milligrams is going to, to serve. So we cross multiply, I have two and a half X equaling, well, anything times 10 means I move the decimal over to make that number bigger. And so then when I take 225 and I divide it by two and a half, I get 90. So 22 and a half milligrams would serve an animal that is 90 pounds. If you have a serving, one serving of cereal is two thirds of a cup and you happen to have 18 cups of cereal. How many servings do you have? Well, we start off with saying, how much do I have? I have 18. And, and in that, I'm trying to find out if a cup, or if one serving is two thirds of a cup, I'm trying to find out how many servings I'm able to subtract out of this 18. If we needed it visually, I have this whole serving amount, and I'm trying to find out how many two thirds of a cup exist within that. So whenever I have this, I'm taking it out, setting it out, finding out how many I have, that is asking me to divide. So I need to divide out two thirds, which means we copy, we dot, and we flip. Because we don't divide by fractions, we multiply by their reciprocal. Now, because fractions are snobs, we have to turn that whole number into a fraction so that the other fraction can handle it, deal with it. Uh, I could go ahead and take the easy way and cross multiply or cross cancel, and I see 2 and 18 both have a shared factor of 2. So when I divide 2 out of 2, I'm left with 1. 2 out of 18 leaves me with 9. Now that I have 9 over 1 times 3 over 1, any number over 1 is a whole number, so I don't have fractions anymore. I have whole numbers. I have 9 times 3, which is 27. So there are 27 servings. Now there are some people who really don't enjoy cross canceling. It just doesn't come naturally to them, and that's okay. You could have go went ahead and just kept it as 18 over 1 times 3 over 2. And when you mold eight, multiplied 18 by 3, you got 54 over 2. So then figuring out, well, how many times can I take 2 out of, oh, helps if I write it correctly, out of 54, five, 2 can be taken out of 5 twice, which means I take out 4, leaving me with 1, bring down the 4, 2 divides out of 14, 7 times evenly, so great. So that is also a way to be able to get to that 27 servings. The final question asks us if negative 4 squared and parentheses negative 4 squared, it's going to be the same answer. Why or why not? So the critical component in this is the parentheses. In this first value here, the exponent is only touching the 4 tenths. It is not touching the negative. So this is saying I have a negative times 4 tenths times 4 tenths. 4 times 4 gives us 16. And then I have two decimal places in the problem, which means I need two decimal places in the answer. But then I had the opposite of that. So I have a negative 16 hundredths. Up here, because of the parentheses, that exponent distributes to the negative as well. This is a full negative 4 tenths times a negative 4 tenths. So because my negatives double up, it becomes positive, and a 4 times a 4 is a 16. And because I have two decimal places in the problem, I need two decimal places in the answer. So no parentheses means it's negative. Parentheses means it's positive. That's why these are not the same values.